Weekly film number 35. Bleach. Okay, a Netflix original. Where can we go with this? Because it's based on the manga and anime series of the same name by Tite Kubo. And director Shinsuke Sato uh, directs this movie. And the plot basically revolves around the young boy met by a mysterious woman who is a soul reaper, beings with the ability to see ghosts and bring them to peace. And it is left up to them to stop this arbitrary deadline to, to beat a monster. And whether they're escorting the fucking ghosts with nice words or pounding them on the head with swords. It... Was there a plot in this movie? I, I don't know. I, for me, it didn't really feel like a story so much as an action-filled, jumpy narrative that followed a lot of stereotypical action film tropes. Uh, a. Protagonist with the latent powers that get stronger throughout the film? Check. B. Training montages that highlights the tension between two characters, but they let loose through the course of the montage? Check. C. An ambiguous antagonist that is only served as a pawn for the bigger antagonist? See, the hero, let's be honest here, the writer, somehow finding his way to victory despite all the odds. Check. So a lot of these typical tropes were coming in, and so, you know, as, as, and again, it's a very basic plot. It's a very basic plot of, oh shit, I got new powers. Oh shit, I got a god. Oh shit, enemy. Oh shit, other enemy. Oh shit, peace. And it is, again, it's, and the crazy thing is, of course, you know, the anime and the manga series goes on for so long, and for them to try to condense this into a near two-hour film, it's very difficult to do. And yeah, it, the, the plot and writing definitely suffers from that. And generally, that's what happens. And also the characters. A lot of characters do get skimmed. But shout out to Sota uh, Fukushi. Uh, the actor as Ichigo Kurosaki was pretty fantastic. I'm not going to lie to you. He was actually pretty badass. And I ain't going to lie about that shit because that dude really embodies how Ichigo the character is. Kind of a brutish punk but he's also a very caring, kind-hearted individual. And Fukushi's really, you know, I gotta give that dude some fucking credit, man. His acting was actually pretty subtle and nuanced enough where I'm, I'm sitting here thinking like, damn, he doesn't have to expo expose it too much, but everybody else is expositing. Everybody else is expositing. Everybody else is like, oh my God, guys, this is what's happening in the plot right now. And you're like, good God. Couldn't we use visual clues to do this shit? This is like every other character is there as an expositional piece. That's that's really all they were there for. They were there as like an information button. You know when you play video games and you play the tutorial, you press that tutorial button. That's exactly what these characters are. I mean, Rukia kind of goes without saying, the most bland fucking character. And even when you read them anime and manga, I mean, I'm pretty sure there are Rukia fans, but when I when I read Bleach, I just always felt that she was the weakest character. Such a bland, boring fucking character. But, that's just me. And so far as visuals, though, another movie where Netflix really... And, and here's the thing, they properly paid, and I think they put the right budget for visuals. I really do think that. Yes, some of the effects were not as stellar as others. There were some noticeable, you know, visual effects where it... it Felt like, good God, this does not work on the green screen. You, you, what the fuck happened there? But generally speaking, though, it, it was pretty decent. The the visual effects, the special effects, they, they were able to tie that in really well to all the props and all the costumes and shit. And it didn't... And, and as far as anime adaptations go for a live-action film, it wasn't that bad in terms of materials and how they all looked. Even Ichigo's hair didn't look all that silly. And Renji, the, the, here's the thing about Renji. So if you guys don't, if you guys don't know about this manga or anime, uh, and Renji's one of the Soul Reapers who has this crazy ass long ponytail style red hair, and Byakuya uh, is a Byakuya, the fucking um, Rukia's sister, Rukia's brother. All these crazy hairstyles, but somehow it works. Like in other anime. Um, anime live adaptations, they tend to just look very awkward. It, the, it looks like the costume designer kind of got drunk and said, I'm just gonna let this be. But at least with this one, it felt a little more proper in terms of how authentic it looked. It looked very genuine. And hey, maybe it, it could be down to some some character being able to portray it. I think the Renji character, as over-exaggerated as, as he was, he was able to play that fairly. The actor was able to play him fairly well. But Back to the visuals. Cinematography, I thought, was pretty fantastic. I thought every scene 
where it wasn't moving blurry motions, it felt very picture picturesque. And every moment felt like a really good screenshot of what the director got from the Bleach manga. And I, I thought that was a huge shout out and a homage to the original creator Tita Kubo because this, I, I'm telling you, I really did, I really enjoyed this manga series a long time ago. And for them to translate a lot of the comic panels or those manga panels, kind of directly translating it doesn't always work, but they did it in a way where they have it in a film format, film style. But it still looks uniquely theirs, but also mangas, like, which, which is crazy. And I'm telling you, you just have to watch it to really understand what I mean. And as far as music goes, the music really brings out the anime vibe, uh, but it isn't the best soundtrack to put out. It, it really just does its job. It's nothing to write home about. It's nothing spectacular, but it really just does its job. And here's the thing. After being, an, and like I said, after being an avid Bleach manga fan, for a long time. You know, the movie didn't turn out as bad as some of the other anime adaptations I've seen. <laughs> Death Note, fuck you. Seriously. Fuck you, Death Note. But as far as live adaptations go, I think this was pretty damn solid. But, you know, it not without its flaws. I mean, the ending dragged on. Holy shit. I thought the Return of the King's ending was long. This felt longer. This felt somehow longer. And so, guys, if I have to give this movie a review, number, score, I give it a 5.5 out of 10. Uh, Bleach is a very well-done anime adaptation that feels like somehow, like, by the books and by standard action film. Which is crazy, because from what all the good stuff they've done, it everything else just seems so subpar. So that's why, five and a half, but make sure you go check that shit out on Netflix. Not too shab, not too shabs.